the mother seeks to actively mind the relationship between the social dramas of everyday life and aesthetic drama. So in the final section of this paper, I draw the reader's attention to the moment the curtains fall, precisely because that is the moment when stage drama meets social drama. That is the moment when the performance begins to enter the implicit rhetorical structure of our everyday life. How do we make this moment count? The final principle is to deny your audience the Hollywood ending they desire. It invites theater makers to revisit the function of catharsis in creating oral history performance with the intent for social change. Catharsis provides audiences with a release from the difficult emotions that arise during the show, which in a performance piece premised around accounts of, tra of trauma, those feelings will surely arise. But what are the politics of providing theater goers relief from the momentary discomforts that such stories elicit? What can we truly accomplish if after such feelings are purged, audience members can re-enter society feeling renewed and restored, free of their liberal guilt and at peace with this superficial engagement with the issue? Catharsis is an unlikely affective space for civic action to be ignited. Collective action requires ag agitation. It is fueled by feelings of unrest, anger, and dissatisfaction so strong that it cannot be contained. It emerges out of turbulence. It draws strength from a people unsettled, a people desiring catharsis and not those who have already achieved it. In light of this, emotional release must come from taking back their civil, civil liberties and not from the performance itself. In our efforts to disrupt passive engagements with trauma narratives, we must refuse catharsis at all costs. By denying audiences relief from the trauma that they have witnessed, the onus is on them to resolve their emotional turmoil by taking action in the world beyond the theater space. And my desire is that they leave the aesthetic world behind and walk into the world of social drama with a desire to resolve the tensions they now carry in their bodies. According to oral historian Sean Field, closure is often projected as the necessarily positive outcome of sharing traumatic narratives. However, Closure evokes ahistorical fantasies that it's possible to emotionally uh, sever bad events or periods from people's lives. Trauma does not exist within a fixed time period that one can simply move past or get over. For minoritarian people specifically, trauma continues to frame their interactions with the state regardless of the era in which they find themselves. Ahistoricizing trauma also depoliticizes our response to it. To resolve the emotional dissonance that narratives of trauma bring up in audiences risks facilitating their disengagement from the social, historical, economic, and political realities that enable these traumatic encounters to reoccur. Rather, we must feed and foster any gnawing feelings of unease the audience is unable to purge at the end of the performance because this creates a pathway for social and political action offstage. Unrest is an affect that when cultivated, carries much political potential. For audiences are citizens first. If they walk away feeling unresolved, maybe they will be motivated to resolve it. Because as Sutherland reveals, no performance ever truly comes to an end. They are all simply continuations of dramas that came before and those to follow. Think of your play as a multi-part series. Rather than ending your play, consider it to be continued because there will be a sequel, whether you consciously work toward one or not. That sequel will be written, performed, and produced by your audience. How does your work create the foundation for what is to follow? If your intention is to motivate your audience to take action, then the final scene is the most important scene of the play because it determines what feelings the audience brings into their social world after the curtains go down 